Hello YouTube, this is Omid here with another Wargame Airland Battle Beta video. In this episode I'm going to be doing another Warsaw Pact Country, this time it's Czechoslovakia. And actually I've very much enjoyed playing as Czechoslovakia in this game. So, as you can tell it's another 4v4 match which means we're on Telemark again. Uh, I just prefer 4v4 games in general, you know, taking full advantage of what the PC can offer. And also, you can blame others if you fail. So, this time I'm deciding not to go over to Michael because I thought that's getting a bit repetitive. I've done that too many times. I didn't really enjoy fighting there anymore. So I decided to go over to the Boris Dimitri center side of the map. And it's actually quite an interesting side of the map to play in. I'm just checking out my allies doing nothing here. So, to sum up Czechoslovakia, they've got a good mix of units. They've got sort of the medium class tanks of the, so of the, um, not the, so the, of the Warsaw Pact. They've got a few AT GM tanks, they've got a few T-72s, so, that, you know, it, they perform well in the tank category. Uh, they've also got a, f some, a few interesting aircraft units, a good mix of um, recon, however, they don't have any helicopter recon, which sucks a bit. And they also have access to Cub missile batteries, which are always good for an Air Force game like this. So, as you can see, the two... Um, command zones here have like reinforcement routes that run directly parallel to each other. So what I'm thinking is scouting out what they're going to be calling into the battle, and then deploy some tanks to shoot directly on top of it. Um, elsewhere, I'm going to I'm using the T72, the basic T72, not the more advanced one at this point, just because T72 should do in this battle. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much it. So as you can see, Czechoslovakia also has the advantage of having these sort of um, cheap UAZ um, recon units. And these are actually quite good because although they're very weak, they're usually fast and have very good optics. So as you can see, I'm starting to see the first enemy movements towards me. It's actually interesting because when you think about it, they didn't actually need to call these units in. They could have reinforced them and they'd have got there faster. Just a side note. So, well, as you can see, um, there's a few uh, infantry being deployed into the woods. I've kept my motor Strelke with a C in the town, um, just to keep it secured, because obviously the town's probably a strong point of this command po point. Um, and I'm reading in more recon keeps to see what's going on. Unfortunately, my recon keep was caught in the forest by the infantry and taken out quite quickly, which means I'm a bit blind, so I'm getting my tanks away from the woods, because there could be a quick ambush. I'm bringing in my uh, OT-62B, so the, these are the infantry transports, which have a heat cannon and a PKT machine gun, so they're quite good transports. Um, but yeah, so a bunch of Keeftons and what looks like um, anti-tank missiles. Now, I brought a T-72 over on that side to fight them off, but as you can see, it's taken a few shots from the ATKM units in the woods. But the Keeftons are under on all sides, and I think my allies have a few tanks in the area. So this shouldn't be too tough. So, the M so the T-72M is the basic one, I think the M1... And then the M1CZ is the more advanced one, and then the T-62 is their AGKM tank. So you can see I'm taking a few hits from their AGKM unit in the woods. And so I, what I did is decide to bring in some infantry to handle it. As you can see, my allies bring in some T-34A5s in. No, they're not actually that good against Keeftons. I think they even, might even be inefficient against Keeftons face-to-face, but, you know, they can distract them enough for my CZ to take it out. Unfortunately, they're also ripped to shreds by that anti-tank fire, but overall, T-34s are actually relatively good against ATKM infantry. So let's see, a Harrier's flying in. Um, fortunately, I've got some cubs flying around so that they can scare it off. And yeah, let's see, the scores of the match are actually completely level up until that point at 550 to 550, but now at 650. And it's relatively balanced between me and non such on my team, and then the others are sort of doing okay. So now the T34s have moved in for the kill, and we've sort of got very close to um, the wood. Also, my allies brought in some BM-21s, which are saturating the area, area with rockets. Quite a wide blast, I'm not sure why they refined that blast. I mean, they should have been able to get a corrected shot because of all the units, but, I don't know, maybe they were panicked or something by an airstrike. Who knows, but they weren't very accurate. 
So now my motor strategy are moving into the woods to clear out the infantry um, and the Spartans are getting torn down as they run away. So at this point my main priority was one, um, cut that reinforcement at point, I'm also buying an Adena because artillery is very good in this game. So my my main plan was to cut Sender's reinforcement route, which make, makes it hard for them to reinforce because they have to micromanage it to make sure it purposely spawns in further away and then tell it to come here. Um, and then even in the future, take her down. So as you can see, some more Crosshair 2 jets are flying over. Um, unfortunately, my rocket seems to be a bit low. The Cubs don't seem to have that many missiles in them, which sucks a bit, but there you go. But yeah, so overall I think I've done quite well, I mean, I've pushed them back in and around centre. So at this point I'm more focusing on building on my anti-aircraft defences because they seem to be a jet heavy force. I'm also sending in my recon to see, see what they have at centre. As you can see they're now starting to reinforce centre, which means they're coming into reinforcement lines. Now my plan was the T-72 should do quite well at close range and I have some AGM infantry as well. Unfortunately they brought in quite a lot of Keeftons and Keeftons are pretty good tanks. They're well armoured and have a decent gun. So at this stage I wasn't really sure what to call in. I mean, the, you know, the AGM infantry can do a lot of damage but then again, because of the hillside they have to get quite close to them to be in and, th and then, you know, they can take return fire. Also it doesn't help that they were just hit by an airstrike it looks like. Um, so yeah. Overall, Czechoslovakia is a good nation. I mean, you know, they've got a fairly decent support because they've got Cubs, Pragas, and they're um, the very accurate Dane artillery unit. They've got a good mix of tanks. Um, it definitely fills a vacancy in other ones because East Germany and Poland have sort of plentiful but quite bad tanks, whereas the Soviet Union has a lot of extremely high end tanks that are very expensive. So Czechoslovakia sort of smooths out the difference nicely with some medium priced tanks. None of them are too monstrous or too cheap, but they're, they're sort of good, good middle ground, which helps a lot. So yeah, elsewhere we got the Spartans retreated. Unfortunately, the Keeftons have moved up there too, so this little ambush party might not go to plan. But the Keeftons are actually being deployed to another battle, so I can get far a few hits on them, on them so helping my allies out in the future. Yeah, overall, I think the battles, you know, it's going okay. Czechoslovakia is quite a. I keep repeating myself now, this is stupid. Um, what else is up with Czechoslovakia? Their supply trucks, they aren't actually that good. Um, all they have is the Kolos, which is, uh, you know, technically the best supply truck because it's got a machine gun on it so it can fire on people. Oh, here, here's a. Surprise the magic cal two challengers were called in. Now, at this point, I was really panicking because. Challengers are pretty much the best tank NATO can field in the beta because I don't think they have any Labrador or Abrams to call on. So at this point, I'm a bit afraid because you know what's this challenger going towards? It looks like it's heading towards these my high-end tanks over here. Um, and as you can see, they're sort of getting pinned down because there's Keeftons up there in that other command point. Which one is it? I can't tell this point. And then, so it's sort of like they're being sandwiched, so what I decided to do is just retreat as fast as possible. So at this point I'm just, you know, yelling for help because obviously two Challenger 2s, that's about 300 points worth of pure armour. So what I decided to do is, t the T-72s are probably screwed, but because I don't have anything that's powerful enough to take out the Challenger. Uh, I don't even have any air support at this point, well I didn't think of buying it probably. So what I decided to do is rush my T-72s into the Keeftons and hopefully take them out. So helicopters, Czechoslovakia has two helicopters that they can call on the MI-35. Now I don't think this is some kind of really neat like, prototype. It's basically an MI-24 with a different name, I believe. So, you know, it's pretty much what you expect from uh, MI-24. Machine gun, rocket pods, ATKMs, and can carry infantry. Uh, but obviously it's quite a fairly expensive helicopter. Also well armoured. So as you can see here, the Keeftons are sort of doing a good job taking, or the T-72s are do, taking a good job firing on the Keeftons, but the Challengers just come up in the rear, and uh, yeah, that's not too bad. 
So the MI-35 is actually, you know, a good choice to take out the Challengers because they can use their rocket pods to stun them and their ATGMs to finish them off, and Challengers can only respond with machine gun fire. Uh, unfortunately, the Challengers like f shooting right at the Cub because it's the only land unit in the area, so I have to pull it away to save it. There's the f first Challenger down, but you see the Cub's down, so the Tomcats can just fly in. I mean, there's a few other Cubs firing at them, but not enough to stop them shooting down both of my helicopters. I don't know, I think one survived. Good for it. So elsewhere I've got my Dana now next to the FOB. I'm fortunate, you know, and there's just your example. Look how tight that fire pattern was. There goes the second one now. But it's bought enough time for my allies to send me some help with some AG game infantry and some T-72M1 CCs. So at this point the challengers are down and that's pretty much the they're acing the whole dead. Of course, they still have quite a few jets there, but I'm, I'm steadily increasing my Iron Dome of Defense. Get out, get that reference. Except it's for missiles instead of planes. Anyway. Uh, so, else, so now I'm going to move on to center. Basically, the plan was now, if I can take center, or at least, basically, if I can put a command vehicle in it, that means I can reinforce closer by a tiny amount, or I can stop them reinforcing there at all and force them to resupply um, and reinforce from the rear points. So, basically, uh, that that was my plan. Now, as you can see here, I was I offered to um, send a CV to one of my ally zones, but I guess no receipt bought his own SBW to buy it, so that was a bit of awkward timing there. So now I'm saving up to basically take center. Now my I don't really have that many forces left. I've got a couple of T-72Ms um, scattered around, but my best tanks were knocked out by the Challenger. I've still got all those Cubs to perform uh, to provide effective defense. 